All right, and we are back, and I watched Peanut Gallery just sniff his wine. I don't even think you took a sip. Oh, I did. <laughs> I know. Anyway, um, let's talk about the Dark Side of the Ring episode of Herb Abrams and the UWF, the Universal Wrestling Federation. Yeah, hookers and cocaine. Yeah. So, Peanut Gallery, did you, before this episode, did you hear about Herb Abrams or the UWF? I heard about the UWF in name. I've never heard of Herb Abrams. Okay, so... Um, the one thing that they did not cover is that there were two different UWFs. Yes, I saw that. There were two different UWFs. So. One, one that was run, I believe, by Vern Gagne. Yep. And he never copyrighted the name UWF or Universal Wrestling right. Federation, which is why when that company folded, Herb Abrams could use the same moniker right. um, to, for his promotion. Right. Uh, so this was the second incarnation yes. of the UWF. Yes, and the um the Ganya UWF. I'm not even sure if it was uh, Vern Ganya. I'm not a hundred percent about my UWF because that was like late seventies, early eighties. Right. So no one really cares. Right. Um. So kind of, it's like I heard that one was like a really good promotion. Right. It just kind of was pushed out from the um, territory takeover. Right. Absolutely. So that's kind of what happened there. Um. <laughs> I loved this episode. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had the intention of it, but the Herb Abrams was like the Tommy Wiseau of the professional wrestling promotion. This well, and probably without as much drugs and cocaine. Right, or and hookers. Right, so, and hookers. Right, uh, but the thing was is that Herb Abrams had all of this money. And nobody knew where it came from. He just, this guy just came out of nowhere. Yeah, he went to a convention and just, hey, I have all this money. I want to start a wrestling promotion. Mm -hmm. I want to give this thing a try. So he, when he went to like the earliest versions of, it, it was basically a gigantic meet and greet. Right, like WrestleCon or, right. well, not, or StarCast or whatever. It was, it was kind of like the, it was like a newborn baby of the adult, which is known as StarCast right. now. Um, where StarCast has, like, a bunch of other things, but literally what that was was, like, a conveyor belt of right. just getting autographs from wrestlers. It right. was kind of like the baby, and I right. thought it was really cool of how he approached them. Mm -hmm. um, they had Mick Foley, who wrestled for the UWF. Mm -hmm. They showed some of the belts, and they were really cool. I thought um, a lot of what Herb Abrams' ideas were for the promotion were super revolutionary at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, like I said, I, I feel like you should kind of lead this because I at least had some fundamental knowledge of what Herb Abrams, who he was. The only thing I remember about Herb Abrams is that he had a lot of money. He spent it all on hookers and cocaine. Oh yeah, no, he had like a ton of cocaine, which and, was... and that's kind of what happened. And then, right. and then he kind of we don't know if he got murdered or he killed himself. No, or... no, no, no. So what happened oh. was they they even said this. So basically, what happened, and I'm going to paint this picture because it's amazing. Herb Abrams was wearing nothing but cowboy boots, uh -huh. chasing high end hookers around uh -huh. with a baseball bat. Oh yeah, covered. In baby oil and cocaine. <laughs> Can't make the shit up, man. Literally the most 80s thing to ever 80s, even though this happened in like 96. Right. And he died of a cocaine-induced heart attack in jail. Ah, fun. That's what happened to him. So ah. it wasn't suicide or anything. He just died because his no, heart was racing. I, I just I just remember like that once that one scene that was described to us where Herb or where this guy, I can't remember his name. It was his friend. It was it was one of the, yeah, it was his best friend. I can't remember his name. I can't either. But he goes into the hotel room and there he is and he has like two hookers in bed and he's he's like butt ass naked and there are two piles of cocaine on the end tables and I'm just like I can see that. <laughs> yeah. It's literally the most eighties thing that I could think of. Right. The only thing that would make it better is if it was all leopard skin. Right. Um, what I I really appreciated Herb Abrams because one, he was really balls to the wall about this, and I think he really invested a lot of money and he had connections. Right. Um. So this is kind of where it leads to where the hell did he get all of the money to fund this exactly? But also he revolutionized a lot of aspects of the wrestling business that we know now of. He was big in merchandising, yeah, which a lot of indie feds at the time were not. Right. He even did cookies, right, 
um, and that's and that's something that even predated the ice cream, uh, the ice cream bars. Right. Where he's like, let's put a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of effort into the merchandising. He really. Tried. Oh, and then he was the one who also pioneered the authority figure. Yes, he was the heel authority figure. Right. On television, going after. Right. I think, I think his only rival was a manager. Right. But he was a deliberate on-screen authority figure. Right. But. Um, I mean, he signed big names. He had Andre the Giant. He signed him to a big contract, mm -hmm. even though Andre the Giant broke it, but that's beside the point. He had Andre the Giant on his television, mm -hmm. which is huge at the time. He had Bruno San Martino yep. on commentary, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Uh, he had Dr. Death Steve Williams. I think that was where he worked before he passed away. And um, I kind of looked up what happened to Dr. Death. Yeah. He actually passed away from throat cancer in Denver. Because mm. he was actually from Lake Hood. Oh, okay. And um, just for the people who aren't watching this in Colorado, uh, Lake Hood is Lakewood, but Lake Hood is because uh, Lakewood is ghetto. Yes. <laughs> actually, we have a decent amount of audience in Colorado, so they'll, they'll know, but we right. need to... The, the inside, inside joke, joke needs some context. Exactly. Like, <laughs> that's where, you know, if you guys watch South Park, that's where Casa Bonita is. Mm -hmm. Literally in the heart of it, Casa Bonita is in the heart of Lake Hood. Right. So, so there we go. Context here. Here. So um, he really revolutionized that. He introduced a lot of unnecessary champions. Yes. As well. Like, I think. Over the time of this promotion, he had like a midget champion. That was yeah, amazing. he had he had like I think like eight or nine different titles. Right. Um, going through his company that had like twenty people in it. Right. It it just basically what this was is that Herb Abrams. What I got out of it the most was Herb Abrams got in the way of his own success. Yes. Because he really ramped up the cocaine. He really spent good money on the high-end hookers. Yep. He really... Um, oh, and at the same time, the wrestlers had their checks bounced, too. Yes. And the uh, there was a story that really stuck out to me was the TV production company that he hired out. Yeah. Um, their checks bounced, and they are like, we're not going to film your television until we can get this money. Herb Abrams took basically the entire production company into his office to call his bank. And basically what Herb's had was two different bank accounts. The UWF account, which had no money, and his personal bank account, which had millions. Right. Like, I think they said like tens of millions of dollars in the bank. And they're like, how come you can't pay anybody if you can't transfer at least some capital to this UWF account. Right. Um, and I, I thought that kind of stuck out to me because in, in a way it was almost like that time it was out is this guy has all this money and nobody knows where it's coming right. from. Uh, there were no in indications of any kind of mafia connections right. or anything. Right. Except he, just, he has all this money. Right. In um, one of his pay-per-views, he couldn't sell out, like, this small little uh, Florida thing. And then all of a sudden, he books MGM Grand oh, in yes. Las Vegas. Yes, he books MGM Grand Garden Arena. And, like, 50 people show up. And it's like, oh, there's 17. Well, there are 17,000 seats in there. It's like, oh, yeah, 50 people show up. But I got MGM Grand. It's like, fuck. I mean, I, I think it's amazing that a guy who did not have a obvious trajectory. Who didn't have a fucking clue. Uh, who didn't have an obvious trajectory. I think he would have if he didn't do so much cocaine. Right. But anyway, I think his trajectory where he was going, it's like, how did he book MGM Grand? This is MGM Grand in the 90s. Right. There was, there was no T-Mobile Arena or massive-ass stadium being built right outside of Mandalay Bay. MGM Grand was the place to do a show at the time. Right. So how he got that is extraordinary. Yeah. And I think a lot of people were saying that his connections really helped. Fund oh, yeah, that. absolutely. And, man, if I could have a day with Herb Abrams without the cocaine, 
I would love to pick that guy's brain. I mean, I would do the hookers, but not the cocaine. Right, exactly. No, that's fine. <laughs> um, but to what I have heard from everybody is that uh, Herb Abrams was not a bad guy. Right. I heard he was very generous. He was a very energetic dude, and people he, really, he just got along with people. Right, and he really he really wanted this to work. He wanted to do wrestling. Right. And I, you have to sit there and at least appreciate. At the time, he tried. Yes. He was not successful, but he was like one of the first ones that tried and got somewhere with it. Right. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, he's not here with us, so I'm not going to speak ill of the dead, but in a way, he was the fault of the UWF. Right. If he kept the drugs thing and, like, at least... The, the high end hookers is one thing. Whatever. Go ahead. Fuck as many bitches as you want. I don't care. But... I think the cocaine part and where he got like crazy, mm-hmm. that's where he lost because he did not have the right frame of mind to run a wrestling promotion. Right. So, you know, it, this is kind of one of those things where if you want to do this wrestling thing, you got to like balls deep right. in it. So, yeah, but that's, I, I, that's I, I, all I have. Right. Um, I enjoyed the episode. Yes. I this is one of the ones where I was really excited about and they they crushed it again. Yeah. Uh we have two more episodes of Dark Side of the Ring. The next one is the Road Warriors, and then it's the Death of Own Heart. Right. So next week we'll be doing the Road Warriors. And then we'll have a topic. I'm not sure what we're gonna do. Though. I'm not sure what our topic is. We're behind a couple things, right. but we'll let you know certainly. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll we may try to um tie in the topic with the Road Warriors yeah. one. And just kind of talk about more in depth about what they're going to talk about with the Road Warriors. But, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. Right. I am Majestic Champion, and my first title defense is the 22nd, which is going to be double or nothing. And we had tickets to the motherfucker, too. I know, but we have it for next year. We do. So, that was cool. Anyway, um, if you enjoyed it, feel free to follow us on all of our social medias. And follow the channel by subscribing wherever you are on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast One, Podbean, um, and wherever you can find podcasts. Also, become a patron if you want to sit there and groan and bitch about WWE's product with us in its entirety. Become a $50 patron and you can watch that, including New Japan Pro Wrestling and uh, AEW all for one price. I think it's decent uh, by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash majestic P. And as always, be be majestic. You're about to listen to the Pro Wrestling Zone podcast, a Majestic Production property. One of the quickest rising professional wrestling podcasts on the market today and the most entertaining podcast in the history of existence. Please note, before diving into the show, that this is for entertainment purposes only. So myself and Pina Gallery engage in exaggerations, dirty or offensive jokes, and satirical comments. If you are a triggered little snowflake who gets professionally offended, this is not the podcast for you. If you do enjoy our work, we ask that you contribute to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash majestic P. Contributors get access to the Discord, vote on what topic we cover, and enjoy exclusive content such as pay-per-view watch parties. Here's a sample of that from NXT TakeOver Portland. What about the other? What about the other um, company that Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly went from? Oh, ROH. the one that they were signed exclusively to. Oh, Ring of Honor. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh! Oh! Oh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, oh my God. I felt that in my hand. If this is something you believe you would enjoy, visit our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Majestic P and become a patron. This ensures that we continue to entertain you for years to come. Without further ado, sit back and enjoy the show.